Hi students, this video is on atomic structure, and to get started, we're going to watch a video. Incredible. So that video is made entirely with atoms, and it was made back in 2013. Um, it's quite an amazing thing to think um, that we're able to do that kind of science these days. And yeah, it's um, very possible to see atoms, very possible to even move atoms at your own will. And um, like they said, they're they're using that for future technologies. So pretty cool. Now. In this video, we're going to learn a couple of, of main points here. Um, one, what atoms are composed of, and that they're composed of three main building blocks. Um, that's protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, we'll also learn that atoms are electrically neutral. Once we'll learn um, about the different components, we'll learn what that means. And then um, also that each element has a particular atomic structure that can be explained by using an elemental symbol. So we can learn uh, about the element by um, looking at its symbol. So the first couple of uh, parts to, to recognize here is that um, what, what an atom really is. It's the smallest unit of matter that forms a chemical element. What that means is that if you had, you know, a, a sample of gold, for instance, um, on my ring here, I have um, uh, it's 18 carats, so it's not pure pure gold but um, it's pretty close to pure gold it's just got a little bit of silver and copper mixed in with it to get it a little stronger because pure gold's a little um, uh, soft but um, if I was to have a pure gold ring if I uh, wanted just one smallest piece of gold um, that is still gold the smallest piece of gold is an atom of gold so it's the smallest unit of matter that's still technically gold or technically that substance like oxygen or carbon if you go any smaller then you start going into the uh, different substances that make up atoms so you have uh, a nucleus in each atom and most of the mass is actually in the nucleus um, and there are components that we'll learn about in just a second those are the blue and the red um, dots here and then there's also an electron cloud which is basically the space where these electrons are flying around. Those are the little gray objects here that fly around in the orbit. And um, that, that actually is not a great way of describing how atoms, um, the electrons move in an atom. Uh, they move, instead of moving in, in orbits like a planet, they kind of move in this random sort of like cloud structure that you have on the right image there that's blue. Um, there's a, you can see the little red dot in the middle. That's actually the, the nucleus to the atom. But on the outside, you have all these electrons that are in a cloud. It looks like there's actually thousands of electrons there, but really there may just be four or five. Um, and they're all moving around, kind of appearing in a, more of an electron soup. And that's the best way of understanding where electrons are. They're not really in orbits, but we tend to draw them like that because it's simpler to understand. And that's why models, scientific models are important to understand that they have limitations sometimes. 
Okay, so the atomic structure, atoms are constructed of three main building blocks. We call these protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, the protons and the neutrons are inside the nucleus. And when we say they're inside the nucleus, they are the nucleus. So uh, the protons and the neutrons make up the nucleus, and the nucleus is in the center of the atom. Um, and like I said, most of the weight is there as well. Most of how much the, uh, the atom actually weighs is there. Um, electrons, though, are actually outside the nucleus. So uh, they don't go into the nucleus and they tend to uh, float around in the space um, outside of the nucleus. They have to stay relatively cl close to the nucleus um, and they're actually attracted to the nucleus because they have an opposite charge, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but they, they do whiz around and um, they can be found some distance from the nucleus. Okay, so they have an attraction, like I said, the electrons have an attraction to the nucleus because they have opposite charges, kind of like a magnet has a charge um, or a, a north and a south pole. Um, protons have a, a charge to them and electrons have a charge to them. And so they're attracted to one another. A proton, which usually we draw it as a symbol, uh, P with a plus, has a plus charge and just a plus one charge. For every proton you have, you have an additional plus charge. And so you, if you had six protons, for example, you would have one, two, three, four, five, six plus charges altogether. Now, electrons um, are uh, drawn like this with an E and a minus, and they have a minus one charge. And so if I had a, an element that had six protons, um, you may remember one of the learning goals is that we learned that uh, atoms are electrically neutral. So all of the electrons are going to balance out the protons. And so I'd have six uh, negative charges in this atom uh, because I would have six electrons to match the six protons. And every atom has the same number of electrons and protons, um, at least as the atom is neutral. And again, this, this is a nice little notation for remembering uh, just a shorthand of protons and, and electrons and um, uh, it helps you remember what their charge is. Neutrons, on the other hand, carry no charge. So as many as are stuffed into the nucleus, it affects. It does not affect the charge, the overall charge of the atom. Okay, so to show this and demonstrate it a little bit, um, I'm gonna play with the um, FET here that you'll have access to. And the FET gives us uh, a couple of different ways of uh, uh, playing with the different components, the protons, the neutrons, and the electrons. Um, you'll notice uh, that as you add protons to the mix, you actually change the element's symbol. So if I change the number of protons, I change the letter. And I'm actually um, going to the right here as I add protons on the periodic table, which is up in the right corner, um, I keep moving up the periodic table going to the right. So when we say we move up, I mean we go uh, kind of like reading a book left to right and then go down a row and we keep going. So that's how you uh, change the element's symbol because the protons actually define the element. So if I change the proton, I will change the element's identity. However, I can stuff as many neutrons as I want into there and I never change the identity. That kind of begs the question, what's the point of the neutron? Um, the simple explanation for that is that the neutron helps add stability because if you think about it, you're putting a bunch of charges all in the center of the atom in the nucleus that are all uh, positive. And if they're all positive, if you have the same charge all put uh, together, they're going to want to fly apart because they don't, they, uh, they repel each other. So the fact that the nucleus stays together is basically due to the neutrons being there. So the neutrons help kind of create a buffer in the nucleus. Now the electrons go on the outside and you'll notice as you add electrons over here on the corner right next to the the big F in this case um, you'll notice there's a plus five and a little um, kind of like a gauge and as I add more electrons to it in this case I'm actually going to bring that gauge down because what's happening is I'm balancing the electron um, number with the proton number. The more electrons I add, the closer I get to balancing the number of 
uh, protons with electrons. You can see that count up here at the top, the red balls in the blue um, matching each other. I've almost done it. I need one more blue to match the total number of red. And there we go, I've done it. They match. And I see that over in the right corner, I have a zero and that little gauge is pointing straight up, meaning it's neither negative nor positive. And you see it now, it says neutral atom. So I've achieved that. Now, um, it's kind of neat to see the little cloud um, icon here. The electron cloud, like I said, is a better way of representing it, but we can't see any numbers of electrons there. So we lose that bit of um, information if we just go with the cloud. Now, the last thing to note is um, that little box that you saw in the corner. How does that work? Well, basically there's um, two different there's uh, two different numbers here on the side. We've got this one called the mass number and um, the, the one on the bottom called the atomic number. Um, we'll get into more detail on this later, but the atomic number is just counting the number of protons. The mass number counts the protons and the neutrons together. Remember I said that the nucleus carries most of the mass. So if you wanna know how much something weighs, you count the two particles that weigh something. So in this case, the protons and the neutrons together uh, if, you, if I add those together, I get the number 24. And the mass number on this element here is 24. Um, the atomic number though, which is the identity of the atom, the identity by the way is Mg, which stands for magnesium. This is just an example, um, is 12. So magnesium will always have 12 protons. If I add a proton, I'm gonna change it to the next element in the list. If I take one away, I'm gonna change it to, back to the element um, prior on the list on the periodic table. So um, that determines the letter. And then the elemental symbols are can be a little confusing sometimes, but sometimes uh, just understanding the general rule is important. Um, there can be either one or two letters. So sometimes you might see the letter C, that stands for carbon. That's nice, that's easy to remember. O stands for oxygen. These are just some examples. But there are some that aren't so logical. For instance, gold, like I mentioned earlier. Gold is A-U. Uh, where does that come from? Well, the word for gold used to be orium, and A-U stood for orium. Um, and because, you know, basically chemistry is a, uh, a very old science in some ways, um, it's got a history to it, and it goes cross cultures and languages, um, we use uh, elemental symbols and words that come from different cultures and languages. So orium is still there, it's stuck. Uh, another example of one like that is um, PB, which stands for uh, lead. So lead is uh, symbolized by PB, and that actually comes from the word plumbnum. Um, and actually that's where we get the word plumber from, by the way, because plumbers used to deal with like lead pipes and stuff. Um, the last part, is the charge uh, right here in the corner. And the charge indicates how many uh, protons and electrons you have. So if I know the number of protons here with the atomic number, they're 12, then I will know the number of electrons if I know what the charge is. If it doesn't have a charge symbol, by the way, that means that they're totally balanced, just like we saw. But because in this case, it's a two plus, I know I have two more protons than I do electrons. And I can actually infer you know, that number, and I can and calculate that I'll have 10 electrons in this case, because that would leave two protons over that would have a uh, overall positive charge of two on this element. So that's atomic structure and elemental symbols and the different components that make it up. I hope that was helpful.